Good afternoon, gentlemen. Welcome back to the old computer shack. Uh, in my greasy little hands, you see a uh, vintage uh, MFJ1270 terminal node controller. This is like a modem for your ham radio. As far as I know, this particular example is a direct copy of the old school Taper TNC2. Um, it uh, attaches to a serial port. Uh, you just use a dumb terminal. This is actually like a self-contained computer. It's not just a modem. It's a modem and the computer in one box. Uh, but you hook a dumb terminal to it to interact with it. Um, it has uh, blinking lights. Everyone loves the blinking lights, I'm sure. And uh, there's also a TTL level serial port, a DIN 5 connector for connecting it to your radio. There's some dip switches. There is a 8th uh, inch phono jack that's used for power, WTF. And there is ye old power switch. Now, I've had this since I was in high school, and sometime around, uh, I'm going to guess 1990. 1996 it quit working and it has never worked since I uh, finally got around to um, retesting and renewing my ham radio license so yeah I can operate legally now so I guess it's about time to get some shit working but let's um let's take a look at the thing anyway before we tear it apart and try to figure out what's wrong I have an idea but we will see let me see if I can zoom you in here a bit. Ah, wonder bar. These are each 8K by 8 static RAMs. So that means that this particular example has 16K of RAM in it. These are the ROMs. There's a state ROM and the, um, and the system ROM. I'm not sure uh, what the state ROM, what the deal with it is exactly, so whatever. Um, this is a Toshiba branded Z80 CPU, and this is a Sharp branded uh, Z80 dual serial port controller. There's a bunch of LS series logic in here uh, all over the place, and um, I couldn't point them out without looking in the manual, but there is a uh, a modem modulator chip and a modem demodulator chip on here somewhere. Um, so it's basically a, a Z80 computer with a modem built into it. These things are capable of uh, running at 1200 baud and 300 baud. 1200 baud is for uh, VHF use uh, and on 10 meters and um, 300 baud is for uh, HF use other than 10 meters. When I apply power to this thing, uh, using the bench supply, um, it's, uh, it takes anywhere from uh, 10 to 16 volts input here, according to the, to the schematic of the 1270B. I don't have a schematic for the original taper TNC. I don't think there was ever one publicly released for it. It, it was available as a kit, but um, I haven't found a manual, like a, uh, a schematic for it. So, fuck if I know. Surely there's one out there somewhere. But so the. The manual and schematic that I've got aren't for this exact TNC, but um, it's very, very close. I think it may actually be the same board, but uh, I'm not 100% sure. But I guess I've got to use the manual I've got. Anyway, um, so when I, when I apply power to this thing, um, it shuts my power supply down. So uh, if we stick an ohmmeter on either side of this filter capacitor, that's on the unregulated side of the uh, of the power supply section of this board. There's a dead short here somewhere. It's not necessarily this capacitor, but between the uh, the the power input rail and ground, there's a short somewhere. If we look closely here, very closely, very closely, these two diodes. According to the uh, schematic, these are Zener diodes, um, at least according to the symbol. Uh, but uh, I didn't think the one in 4001 was a Zener diode. That would be um, CR22 
Maybe it's just the wrong. The one in 4001 is a rectifier diode, isn't it? Anyway, that's 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 uh, CR22 right there, and this is CR1 right here. And especially zoomed in on the camera, it's kind of hard to see with the naked eye. But these two, these two, uh, the, the, these two components are are fucked up pretty hard. And um, those both go between the uh, the positive power input uh, on the jack and, and ground. Uh, so something something's janky there. Something caused those to blow up. Um, I assume that's some kind of uh, some kind of crowbar circuit that's meant to um, keep an over voltage on the power input from damaging the rest of the um, the rest the rest of the board. But I, I don't know much about that kind of shit. There are those two diodes that we were just looking at there, and as you can see, they they're on the other side of the power switch, and they go they go right to ground there. So. As long as I'm careful, uh, I imagine we can probably just hook the bench supply um, up to it there. Uh, hell, we may be able to use what's left of the diodes to supply power to the circuit and um, and see if we can get the thing to power up on the bench supply. I can't find the, uh, the wall wart that I used to power this thing with when I was a kid, but uh, that uh, using a, an eighth inch phono jack for power input's pretty fucking janky anyway, so um, I think even if we can get it working, we probably ought to, uh, ought to redo that anyway. So this, um, I know I promised that I would do some computer shit instead of radio shit um, here for a little bit, but uh, this is kind of both, so hopefully that's cool. Uh, I know I've got one in 4001s, but that other one, that um, one in, Jesus, I need glasses, that one in 4745, I think it says, that's a really shitty scan. Um, I don't know if I got one of them, but uh, if that's just a, if that's just like a Zener crowbar of some kind, it's probably not necessary to even have them in the circuit. Oh! Oh my, as Sulu would say. Oh my! Uh, look at that. That's one of the. That's one of the diode pins. Look, look how janky that is. That looks like ass. Oh, oh, the, the. I think the. I think the foil's even lifted from the board there. That is gnarly, man. Let's do it to it. part of that diode out, half of it, if I can get scheduled here. Yeah, looky there. Pretty fancy self-removing diodes. Okay, well there's definitely something wrong with that diode. Well here's your problem. <laughs> well there doesn't appear to be a short there anymore. I guess if the insides of the diode melted and they were still touching each other, the the junction would be shorted out, maybe. I don't, I don't, fuck, I don't know, man. Now, this this is perfectly safe. There is no chance that this shit will slip off of there and short something out and destroy the whole board. No, sir. All right. I'm going to jack it up slowly and see if the power light starts to glow a bit. It's, um... I think it's on the the regulated side of that 5 volt regulator there. So okay, the, I'm, I'm actually the power the needle on the power supply is actually moving now. It's not just killing the power supply. Power supply is up to 5 volts according to uh, according to the. Oh shit, son! I see, I see lights coming up. The power light is glowing. The power light is glowing. The power light is glowing. 
boys. Well, I'll be fucked. That was way easier. Well, we're not out of the woods. I mean, it's possible that whatever destroyed that... Well, no, there's... If this is on the regulated side of this regulator, then the regulator is still regulated. And they're one in 47, 45. That's, that, I think that's an 18-volt Zener diode. That's the, that's the crowbar. If that's an 18-volt Zener, as long as I don't try to power with more than 18 volts, I mean, what the fuck could go wrong, right? Famous last words. One in 4001. Oh, this is this is a uh, reverse voltage protection diode. Okay, that's what that's for. Okay, now, I think we'll just run it without that um, over voltage protection diode. I mean, what could go wrong? Now, what what could ever go wrong? There's nothing, nothing to worry about. The whole world is kittens and bunnies frolicking together through fields of clover with butterflies and shit. Nothing could ever go wrong with anything. Ever. 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 Flow. Flow, Salter, flow. Good penetration, <laughs> just how I like it. Oh my! <clears throat> Turn that back down before I cook something accidentally, 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 accidentally. Clip the leads, throw them on the floor. Very good. Good as new. Well, that, that was depressingly easy. Power supply on. Woo! Machine on. So, these two lights, what are these lights? STA and, STA and CON. They came on and then went out like the CPU was initializing and then setting the front panel state and all that shit. The power light's on. I think, I think, I think it's fixed. And fuck that Zener diode. We gotta do something about that power input jack. Because there is no way in hell that I will ever find... I don't have the right connector for that, and... Come on, there we go. Twelve volts. Solder that bed boy right in there. And then I can just cut the connector off of a fucked up power supply uh, to plug into it. Ah, jankiness. I love you, jankiness. Embrace. Embrace the jank inherent in all things. bigger the glob, the better the job. Good enough for who it's for. I also have the little knobberoo. My knob fell off while I was playing with it. Don't you hate it when that happens? Always overdo it with super glue. The bigger the glob, the better the job. I mean, it's not like I've got uh, any extra CR2032, 20, 20, whatever they are, batteries. So it's surely dead. 
Well, that's a pretty good battery. I've never changed that, even when I was a kid. Huh. Of course, it may have been changed by the previous owner. That's not to say it's been in there since 1986 or whatever, but, um, yeah, huh. Alright. See, um, these old TNC-2s, they, they have, like, mailboxes and stuff. Um, it's, it's like a self-contained computer and the serial port's just for a dumb terminal to interact with the system. Um, but they've got mailboxes. Somebody else that's running Packet can, uh, can log into them and, um, and leave messages and stuff, but um, there's no hard drive. It stores it all in battery-backed RAM. Um, so, and since there's only 16K of it, as you can imagine, um, storage doesn't go all that far. Nobody is back yet. I decided not to drag a real serial terminal out of the other room because that would be a pain in the ass. But I did find a um, DB9 to DB25 adapter and a FTDI serial cable, and I messed around here a little bit um, until I got the uh, baud rate and parity settings right. So this thing runs at um, uh, well, I've got it. It was set to 1200 baud to begin with. I set the serial port to 9600 baud. Uh, it runs seven bits with uh, even parity. Uh, which is a little peculiar. You don't see that very often. And I just got it working. Um, I can see the command prompt when I hit enter. I've got everything powered down now, so let's uh, let's power it back up together with the serial port settings correct and see what happens. Oh, you can't. What the hell's wrong now? Well, it was working a minute ago. Here's the problem. Uh, let's see here. 7 even 1, that's R, right? Okay. 9600, 7 even 1, okay. Now we've got a command prompt. Now let me see. Oh god, it's been like at least 20 years since I've fucked with this thing. Well. AX25 level 2 version 2? But but the ROM release is one is it's a release one ROM. I thought AX25 didn't come out until ROM version 2. Well that's uh that's that's good. Yeah, that's that's very good. We can we can work with that. Um, I don't know what my new call is. This was my old call sign. Um, I don't have it hooked to a radio. God, I can't remember. Um, I can't remember how to use this thing. Anyhow. Well, I didn't realize this thing already had an AX25 ROM in it. Huh. I'll be goddamned. Well, there we go, boys. That, that, was, that was surprisingly easy to fix. I figured we'd be replacing chips. Uh, all right, cool. So, uh, HF Packet, here we come. Yeah, boy. See you next time. Bye.